What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Mopar Crazy Exotic. We back with another video in this beautiful Florida, hot 97 degrees weather. So before every video, <coughs> I got to give you guys a view of the track hawk and a co-star of the track hawk. Let's get it. So everybody know I got a track hawk now. I used to have a Hellcat. <coughs> got rid of the Hellcat, got the track hawk. But I'm gonna give you all a cold start. Yo, this shit sounds so crazy. <laughs> It's hard to keep a black car clean, but. So we in the track hall right now, y'all. It is hot outside, yo. It is hot outside. I don't know where a lot of y'all from. If you're from Arizona or Texas, you definitely understand what I'm talking about. But right now, it is humid and it is 95, 96, 97 degrees right now. Hold on, let me show you. It is 95 degrees right now. And y'all gonna be like, oh, 95 degrees ain't nothing, man. This ain't nothing. Um, 95 degrees with humid. It is crazy. That is crazy hot. You're sweating your ass off. So, okay, so we in the car. The car is cool right now. So let's jump right into this video, y'all. So a couple weeks ago, they just busted this big ass ring in Miami. These guys, I've been talking about this shit for years, 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 and years, and years. I've been talking about this. And it's only now the cops are actually catching on to it. I'm gonna show y'all a clip in it in a few minutes. Um, it's, it's, it's way past the, the, um, the uh, stealing the Hellcats and swapping the engines out. These guys are doing VIN swaps and the cops are posting this shit right now on the news like it's only now. This shit been going on for decades, man. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> long story short, what the lady was doing was she worked at a tag agency and she was doing VIN swaps, high-end cars. You talking about Lamborghini, uh, G wagons, uh, Mercedes Benz G63, um, Ferrari, high end cars, Rolls Royce, high end cars. And what the guys was doing, they were swapping out the VINs and she was registering the car for them, right? She was registering the car for them at the tag agency. They was getting um, registrations for the cars, um, they was getting insurance on the cars. So the cars was legally documented on the road, right? So. If the cops gets behind them and they run the tag, right, they're going to see that the car is legal. The car is good, right? They, they, they swap the VINs. She, she, she uh, legally, not legally, illegally, but legally in the system. If she do it, the cops going to see that the car is legal in the system. The car is not stolen. And she was doing that. The news said she made $3.3 million in doing that alone. Just imagine what those guys made selling those cars. And we're going to talk about that, too. Um, she made $3.3 .3 million. Think about how long she's been doing this. I don't even know. I cannot even put a number to it, how much she probably was charging them per car. She probably was charging them probably about $10,000, maybe more per car. You know what I'm saying? And Miami is a sin city. Miami is a lot of shit going on. You don't know who's rich. A lot of those guys be faking rich. And you would think they're rich, and they really ain't. So a lot of the low-budget rappers that, um, you know, trying to make it, probably just came on the market. They got a little bit of money. They don't want to spend four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000. They go buy a Lamborghini for $50,000, a hot Lamborghini. And the VIN swap, um, they got registration, everything for it. And they would go to these guys. These guys would sell them a Lamborghini for thirty, sixty, seventy thousand, 60000 70000 Depends how much they, you know what I'm saying, they agreed on. But they're not paying 400, 500,000 of what, you know, a legal person would go to the dealership and buy the Lamborghini for the Ferrari or Rolls Royce. You know, those guys would pay nothing for them shits, you know what I'm saying, and making that fast money. And you would be seeing those guys on Collins Avenue, you know what I'm saying, with the big old fake chains on their neck and those cars. Some of them be rental too, but I'm just saying. And, um, and that's how they would get them cars. And you see them guys in Lamborghinis and stuff. But she got busted by 
uh, Miami PD, uh, plus the feds is involved. And you know, once the feds is involved, um, it's just go up to a whole nother level of, you know, of investigation. So I'm gonna show you guys a clip. We're gonna come back and you guys are gonna let me know what y'all think about this clip. Check the clip out. A clerk at an auto tag agency is behind bars after police say she committed fraud. NBC6 reporter Ari Otter is live from Miami with more on this alleged scheme. And Ari, we're talking about millions of dollars. Yeah, Juwan, think of it like money laundering for stolen cars, car laundering. Doral police say they've busted up a car theft ring which had stolen at least 18 luxury vehicles. And with fake VIN numbers, they just put VIN numbers that are counterfeit onto the cars. And with phony titles, they could then resell those vehicles. And two of those cars are sitting here at the Doral Police Department out back. We were able to target, we were able to infu uh, infiltrate, and we were able to dismantle this criminal enterprise. And you're looking at two of the 18 stolen cars. Altogether, including the Lambo and the others, they're worth more than $3 million. These individuals were targeting uh, expensive vehicles, um, and they had made a connection with this person that we arrested yesterday at the tag agency, so it was a perfect storm. Oh, she's falsifying the documents for these stolen vehicles. Catherine Moran is charged with 18 counts of official misconduct and 18 counts of title fraud. According to Doral Police, she enabled the car laundering enterprise to function she allegedly rubber stamped counterfeit documents for the cars, which were stolen all over South Florida. A car could have been stolen in, in Broward County, uh, brought to this chop shop in Doral. These individuals would revend the vehicle, create fictitious paperwork, present it to um, uh, Ms. Moran in the, in the tag agency in the city of Miami. Ms. Ms. Uh, Moran would issue them false paperwork, register the vehicle uh, used in the Florida databases, collect $800 to $1,000 per vehicle that was presented to her through Cash App, Zelle, or other means. And that's how this thing kept happening over and over. It happened 18 times. Moran allegedly pocketed about $20,000. And the car owners aren't the only victims. The reason why sometimes insurance prices are so high and these premiums are so elevated is because of these types of crimes. So it's something that we take extremely serious. Those kind of crimes affect all of us. Police say this started with one stolen car report. The owner had installed a GPS locator device in his car. It was pinging back to a warehouse in Doral. Police got a search warrant. It turned out there was a chop shop inside that warehouse. They found three stolen cars there. And since then, they've made six arrests. And they say more are expected as this investigation continues. We're live at the Doral Police Department. Ari Odzer, NBC6 News. All right, thank you. Y'all watch the clip. And y'all see how crazy this shit is, man. These people are targeting people that needs money in those agencies. You know what I'm saying? They'll come up to you and they'll be like, hey, man, um, you want to make an extra $10,000? Like, oh, yeah. How am I going to make this extra $10,000? Well, you take this car, right, and you get me a registration and put it in the system legally, right? And you're going to make $10,000 off of that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, in a perfect world, you got to be really strong to turn that kind of money down, especially with how the economy is and, you know, who would want to turn down making ten to $15,000 on just by doing that right there. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and those type of agencies, people that work there, it's not people that make very much money. Of course, that's a good bribe that they're going to really think about, and they probably might, 90% of the chance, they might take that deal. You know what I'm saying? So... This is nothing new in Miami, bro. This shit been going on for so long. This shit been going on for a long, long, long time. I don't know why it's only now these people are catching on to this shit, but this shit been going on for years, man. It's nothing that happened overnight. They'll be like, oh, my God, these guys are still in Lamborghinis. They're still in Porsches. They're still in G-Wagons, and they're registering it. This shit been going on for years, man. You know what I'm saying? This is way past... The fucking stealing Hellcats and the VIN swap, I mean, the um, engine swaps and throwing it in 300s and all that shit. This is a whole nother, this is the young dudes doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? This is the young dudes doing that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? And I don't even think they know a lot of these cars don't even stay in the country. A lot of them cars going overseas. A lot of them cars going to Africa. A lot of them cars going to them third world countries. They putting them shit in, in, um, in trailers on the port of Miami and that shit getting shipped out. You know what I'm saying? A lot of them shit don't even be in the country, bro. A lot of them cars, they steal them shit. 
and you see them shit on 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 Instagram and YouTube every day coming out of trailers, you know what I'm saying, in Africa. And be like, "Oh shit, this is my car." You know what I'm saying? Your car is in a third world country, man. So if it's only now uh law enforcement, uh the feds are catching on to this shit, which probably the feds probably been knowing about this shit, but if it's only now that Miami PD's catching on to this shit, they're late, yo, and they need to do better with their investigation. But I don't condone to nobody stealing other people's property. This is just an educational purpose um, video. You know what I'm saying? Work hard. Um, work hard, man. That's all I can say. You work hard, you know what I'm saying? You're going to achieve greatness. Um, I never stole nobody's um, property. I don't condone to nobody on YouTube to go and steal anybody's stuff, man. Work hard. Go to school, man. If you believe in something, you know what I'm saying? If you have a if you have a business or something you want to do and it's something holding you back, man, get up that one day and go start it. If you don't start it, it's never going to happen, man. Um, I always wanted to be a YouTuber. I know I grew up watching Tall Guy, Tall Guy Reviews, and you know what I'm saying? I watched this guy from when he had the Honda to when he had the first... Um, he had his Hellcat Challenger, and I'm, you know, I was used to, I used to watch him, Mr. Organic, and I'm like, man, I want to be a YouTuber, I want to be a YouTuber, but, you know what I'm saying, um, I'm from the Caribbean, you know what I'm saying, so I got an accent, I used to always be scared of people making fun of me of my accent, but, you know what I'm saying, man, I don't care no more, um, I put that on hold, I joined the military, I did 10 years, I got four combat deployments under my belt, two in Iraq, two in Afghanistan, um, I got injured. I got a medical discharge. I'm a 100% disabled veteran. And, you know, I want to achieve my goal. I don't want to just be um, a disabled veteran and it's like, okay, I don't know what to do anymore. You know, I love this car shit. You know what I'm saying? I love this shit to death. I love people that love it. I love to be around people that love the car, love them cars, man. I love going to them car meets. So I told myself, I'm going to do it. I'm gonna I be told myself I'm going to be a YouTuber, man, and I was posting my videos, posting my videos. I wasn't getting no traction, nothing. I was getting like five subscribers a day or five subscribers a month, and, you know, I, I, I gave up on it for a little bit, and I came back, man. You know, I just kept on pushing, kept on pushing, kept on pushing, man, and um, I finally got a breakthrough when a video went viral, and now, man, I'm, I'm achieving my goal. I'm living my dreams. I got 100K subscribers. And we're going to keep on pushing. You know what I'm saying? We're going to go for another 100K, hit that 200K mark, and we're going to keep on pushing, yo. I appreciate everybody that supported me. I appreciate everybody that actually watched the channel. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate y'all. And I wouldn't be there and doing my dreams, living my dreams after the military if it wasn't for y'all. So I love y'all. Um, don't forget, if you're new to the channel, man, before you leave, Hit that subscribe button. Continue to drive for, uh, strive for greatness, y'all. Don't let nobody tell y'all you can't do anything. Um, I'm gonna cut this video in a little bit, but you know I like sharing my story with other people because maybe you know what I'm saying my story could probably reach one person. I don't care if it reach one person. I'm good with that. You know, uh, I joined the army back in 2005. Man, I was um, I was 17, making 18. Um, during the war, when the war was going crazy, Iraq, Afghanistan, man, and, um, you know, it's something I wanted to do, man, after, um, after the 9-11, uh, the Trade Center went down, I wanted to go fight for my country, man, and um, that chapter is over now, and, you know, I want to be a YouTuber, this is what I want to be, I want to be a YouTuber, so, all y'all that, you know, making me achieve my goals and, you know, giving me the motivation to keep pushing, I appreciate y'all so much. And um, like I said, don't let nobody tell you you can't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's just people that they cannot do nothing for themselves. So Misery Love Company, they want to see you down and cannot do nothing for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, man, I love the car community. I love y'all. I, I, I be getting so much joy, like, from my PTSD. You know what I'm saying? Like, instead of being at the house, being depressed and blaming, you know, Iraq, Afghanistan, you know, like, this is like my, my therapy, man, making my videos, being in the cars, doing the car thing, being around my friends with the cars, making videos and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is, this is like my therapy, man. This is like I, I, I just be in my own zone and just, you know, make my video and do my thing. So, you know, I appreciate y'all giving me the opportunity to do that and y'all watching my videos and uh, subscribing to the channel. And um, I'll see y'all in the next video. I love y'all. Keep on striving. And uh, I'll see y'all in the next video. Love y'all.